Good evening. Hope everyone's doing well this evening. Last year, only a few days ago, but it's still kind of funny to say, last year Steve was doing several sermons on disciplines. And one of them that kind of stuck with me was uh, dealt in some part with conversation and how well we converse with one another. We can't get to know one another unless we're able to talk to one another. And it dealt about, uh, it, it made me think a lot about verbal and nonverbal communications that we have in our lives, uh, not just in our everyday life, but in our prayers as well. Around our house, we've always had a saying that the most important person in a conversation is the other person. And how we react to that person in a conversation tells them a lot about uh, are we placing them in the most important spot in that conversation. Eye contact, active listening, uh, your posture, all of those come into play when you're having a conversation with someone else. And each one of those speak volumes on how intently we are listening to that person. These are also true in our conversations with God. Now, you may be thinking eye contact, wait a second, or, but talking more about our posturing. For about 25 years uh, in the summers, I would work as a softball umpire, and I would spend most of my summer umpiring adult softball games up in Branson, over in Fayetteville, and for a handful of those years, I, I trained umpires. And I would go put on a clinic, and we would talk about not just calling balls and strikes, uh, things like that, but we would talk about our posture on the field. Um, body language to an official of any kind is very important. An umpire has to be approachable. One thing that we were taught or I, that, that was part of the teaching process was that they were never to assume a defensive stand when someone came out to speak to them. This was a no-no, crossing your arms, putting your hands on your hips like that was a no-no, basically just arms to the side or behind you. When someone came out to speak to you like that, they were more than likely upset with something you had done. And assuming a defensive stand uh, wasn't going to help the situation. If an umpire was being hollered at by someone from the dugout, a coach or a manager or a player or something like that, he could call out the head coach, but he would try to get him off to the side. Out in the middle of the field on the diamond, obviously you're right there in the limelight. Going over to the dugout, it's kind of like you're going into enemy territory and you're not going to get very far because the others are going to be chiming in. So you pulled him off to a side, to a neutral area so that you could have a reasonable conversation. When we talk to God, I want us to think about in the new year what our posture is. Do we assume some kind of a defensive stand with God? You know, we, we pray a lot to God. We, we pray for forgiveness. Uh, we, thank, we pray for thankfulness. But also we pray to ask God for things. When we pray those prayers when we're asking for this and that are we content with the this or that that God would give to us whether he would or not we have to be content with that and not in some kind of a, a defensive posture I've had several instances on the ball field where a player or coaches you know gets pretty up close and personal with me and a lot of it, you have to just kind of let roll off your back. But when they're hollering and screaming and never had anybody kick dirt on me, but they got close. When they're doing that, they're not going to be able to listen to anything that you say unless you approach it in a very calm, succinct manner. Trying to be calm, no defensive stand or posturing. After a while, you can explain if you will just be patient with them. I would fall back on the umpire training, and before you know it, in most instances, they may not have liked the result, but they understood why we came to that result a lot better. 
kind of reminds me of a, uh, a little bit about what Elijah went through on Mount Horeb. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11, when he has gone to the mountain and God is there, verse 11 starts, The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart. And this is a wind that can tear a mountain, not just blow over a sand pile. It shattered the rocks before the Lord. I've never seen that happen. But that had to have been something awesome to see. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Elijah endured all of that, but when he heard that whisper, he knew that that was God speaking to him. I'm also reminded of uh, the lesson that Bo gave us last week when he talked about Satan and how we need to recognize Satan. If we are not recognizing Satan in the world, then, then we are selling Satan short and putting ourselves in jeopardy. Uh, Bo referenced 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. In chapter 5, uh, verse 8, it says, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Did you know that a lion's roar can be heard from seven miles away? I didn't know that. But it can. Samuel and I once went to the, um, oh, the, the refuge place over there near Eureka. We were standing about 10 feet away from a big cat that was, a, it wasn't even a full blood lion. It was a lion-tiger mix. And this thing was massive. And we were standing on the concrete about 10 feet from it when they brought the food out behind us. And all the animals get real restless when the food's brought out. Samuel or I, or, and I, or one of us, I forget which one, made the comment that that, just kind of talking to him like he could hear us, that um, he wasn't getting any food. It was Samuel. He wasn't getting any food. Instead, he was getting salad that night. A little joke there, and the lion growled. And when that thing growled, the ground under our feet shook. And that was a very unnerving thing. We went on to another place to... To watch the animals. But it, every time I think of that verse, it reminds me of the power that's being compared to. You know, all that growling and roaring is a little unnerving, just as it is with the devil. The devil's actions can be very unnerving as well. I would also teach our umpires, you have to block those things out. You can't have what they call rabbit ears. Rabbit ears are the referees that you holler something from the stands and they hear it and they acknowledge it, which they're not supposed to do. I would say just block it out, which is easier said than done. One Saturday afternoon, I was umpiring a softball game and the backstop was only about three or four feet behind me and I was behind home plate. And there was a woman who was very unhappy with the calls that I had been making. And the next thing I know, she had come out of the stands and was behind the backstop, screaming and hollering. Her husband was on the team that was losing, and it was my fault that they were losing, or so she said. It's hard to block those things out. I did, out the corner of my eye, catch a glimpse of her. And in between innings, I asked the, the park owner if he would come and help us out, and he did. He was an umpire himself put her back up in the stands and asked her not to do that anymore. Now, it just so happened a couple of days later, as I was going in for my yearly eyeglass checkup, um, I wore contacts when I umpired, so to give little, you know, uh, ammunition to the people, you don't want to see an umpire wearing glasses out on the field. So I go in for my checkup, and behind the counter, I see this lady sitting there. 
I didn't say anything to her, and she didn't say anything to me. But I know that as I was leaving, she had to be thinking, I knew he needed glasses. <laughs> These are things that are going to get in our way. And in the new year, I want to encourage us. You know, we've got our, our Bible reading plan going on. Take time to find the right posture with God. We can't have the rabbit ears when it comes to the devil. Now, that's not to say we don't need to pay attention. But we just can't let ourselves listen to everything that the devil has to say to us. We have to tune out the noise. And we have to listen for the whisper. And in this new year, I urge each one of you, while we've got the reading program going on, while we're trying to build up our, our salvation, our, our souls, our spirituality, let's work on tuning out the noise and listening for the whisper. Tonight, if there is anyone here who needs prayers of the church, needs help in any way, wants to put God on in baptism, we ask that you would come now as we stand and sing.